Somebody uh, outside is scraping, scraping a shovel across to you. <gasps> and now, it's like my window's open, so now they can hear me bitching about it. Whoops. Well, they're also going to learn a lot about our our guest of honor today, who's not here with us, but is here with us in spirit, Famke Jansen. Oh, she's always in us. I she's mean, al- <laughs> she's always with, she's, oh, she's always in my heart. I mean, you're yeah. doing something wrong if she isn't in yours. Hello, and welcome Hello. to this week's episode of the Full Volume Podcast. I am your host, Jai Jolie, and I am joined by my other host. Harvey Where- Brent. Whatever side he's on today, because I never know when the, the recording. Oh, it moves around. Yeah. Who yeah. knows where I end up? Mm. Usually on the bottom. Anyways, um, <laughs> welcome today. We're going to, sorry, I took your thunder. You lead it. You're better oh. at leading. Oh, okay. Okay. So we had a conversation a couple weeks ago, slash sort of yesterday. Slash on, last night on a whim. Slash <laughs> last night about what we're going to do with all of this free time that Disney plus has granted us with Mm. uh, our wheels are no longer spinning. We aren't uh, ferociously Googling what is coming next. There is a huge lull, but we will, it'll be back. Uh, They'll be back with their television properties with Loki next week. Mm -hmm. But now we, I mean, we still have to talk about something at full volume. So Brent, I uh, is taking me to school. I'm taking you to Famka school. <laughs> and today, we, I don't know how we even got onto this, but I was, I was like, uh, I suggested one thing, and you're like, how about our our favorite Famka? <laughs> our favorite Famka, <laughs> our favorite Famka Jensen films. Let's rank our top five. <laughs> and he's just, I haven't seen most of them. But he's oh. seen almost all of them. So he's I've just seen, going to tell I've me seen, about it. I've, my Fomkaography is extensive. It is. <laughs> both in film and television. I think today we should leave out the television and just talk about film. Because if we're getting into television, then we're talking about Nip Tuck. We're talking about Hemlock Grove. We're talking we're about, talking how, to about do it. how to get with murder. Yeah. 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 There's a lot there. She's in Fomka Jensen's in a lot of things. But I figured, why not? myself and G.I. Jolie rank our top five favorite Famke Jensen films of all time. Not top five best films of all time, but our favorite Famke Jensen roles. Yes. So, and... well, and I thought she's a good person to pick too, because she actually, I mean, as much as we like to clown around and talk about drag race and video games and comic book adjacent, she is very closely associated with comic book lore because she played Jean Grey in the X-Men films from 2000 until 2014 she's been in five x-men films yeah so she's been in a lot of them and so like you know in a full way it kind of works around we don't like to mention the fox x-men films it's going to come up today i'm sorry for triggering you um (laughs) but it's i mean we have we have famka films to talk about she's been around for a while she's super established she takes on very interesting roles as you'll find out through the the length of this podcast and so yeah Let's get to it. Let's get Let's right get... into it. Okay. Okay. My honorable mentions, I have honorable mentions that don't hit the top five. Okay. So first one that did not hit the top five for me is X-Men, the original 2000 X-Men. Doesn't quite crack it. It would if they wrote her in properly. Jean Grey was pretty underwritten. She was meek. She was mousy. She was quiet. She spoke like this. Um, so there wasn't really a lot for Famke Jansen to do. There wasn't really a lot for any X-Man to do in that movie, except Wolverine. Yeah, I was going to say, well, if you were Wolverine, or was that the one that they also introduced Rogue in as well? Yeah, Rogue actually had a beefy role. We'll, yeah. give, we'll give that to Rogue. She had a beefy mm-hmm. role in the first film, and every other film went down in the dumps after that. So, but yeah, um, she didn't have anything to do. And so Famke was fine in the role. She grows into it, as you'll see at the as we go through the countdown. But honorable mentions is X Men from two thousand. Okay. <laughs> Thoughts, comments on that? I <laughs> right. <laughs> um, because I don't know if I've seen a lot of her, a lot of 
a lot of her work. You know, no, seriously, I can't even put X Men in this. Oh man! Well, I, well, do you agree though? Just with how she was, how what kind of hand she was dealt in X Men? Like that's what I'm saying. Like, oh yeah, puppet to Scott Summers, and then for the rest, I mean, let's not uh, let's not even talk about the comics and what was being done to Jean Grey in the comics. But mm. um, she didn't have much of a role. She seemed to have much. She seemed to have a role, but she when you, it's like when you look back at Twilight. You're like, wow, uh, Edward said nothing. No, he said like a lot of things. And there's a lot of substance in that film um, when you look back at it. But you, it's the opposite for her, for her as Jean Grey in the X-Men films, where it's like, oh, no, she was a she was a heavy hitter. But that's because she there was sort of like a love triangle that they're trying to build with her, Scott and Wolverine. That's where mm-hmm. that's. The Wolverine tie is where they started her. She was there to also look for mutants, help Professor X. So it wasn't like beefy. It could have been better. It wasn't the best. No. I, but it also wasn't as bad as Halle Berry's accent. So like <clears throat> middle of the pack. Oh, it's like, oh, my brain. My brain fog is lifting and I'm starting to remember things pre-COVID. I'm and that's one of them. <laughs> I'm undoing everything your therapist did to suppress that memory. Yeah. Here you are. <laughs> So that was my honorable mention, but now we're going to get into top five Bomka Jensen films. I love that I have the opportunity to tell this to people. <laughs> Number five. He's got a list. Oh, I got a list. Number yeah. five from 1998, the film The Faculty. Oh! Have, have you seen The Faculty? Of course I've seen The Faculty. <laughs> um, I was obsessed. Obsessed with sean hattesey yeah as and... a teen <laughs> wait who does he play in that uh sean hattesey plays oh my god cast Let's why see. don't i remember that he plays stan oh stan of course yes. yeah also, former chief captain yeah also like little gay jolie obsessed with claire duvall yeah Clay- so for those of you who haven't seen this film it's basically a cross between the breakfast club and invasion of the body Slatch- snatchers with a little bit of the thing thrown into it so it's wild it was written by kevin williamson and the film it stars a lot of teen heartthrobs of yesteryear so jolie mentioned Clea duvall um sorry sean hannesey no that's yeah, a fox sh- that's a fox pundit isn't it <laughs> <laughs> sean hannesey uh, Jor- jordana brewster yeah. Of Fast and Furious franchise fame. Josh Hartnett. Uh, yes, that's it. I was going to say, everyone expects me to say Josh Hartnett, but I was not into, I was not about, um, I, oh God, I had, cr- the, I crush, I had dumb crushes on like the idiot guys. Oh, yeah. Stupid. Well, maybe it was just curly hair. I like curly hair. <laughs> yeah. Josh Hartnett doesn't have curly hair. No. Mm-hmm. And but he's the... got like a pinched smug face. Anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there. It's a little bit petty, but. Also, um, Salma Hayek is in this film too. But the film is about basically a um, alien life form that um, uses human beings as hosts. And it's it very quickly can replicate by sticking its tongue or basically infecting other humans through the ear. And so the whole point of it is that it's infecting this entire town and it's trying to collect everyone. And it starts with the faculty. And so it goes after the teachers first. I can't, I don't know which, I think it gets the coach first. That's the first. Um, mm, Mr. Furlong, the science teacher. No, no, no I right. think it's the coach. And then the coach infects the principal and, you know, a, so it goes through the faculty and Famke Jensen, our dear Famke Jensen, happens to be one of the faculty members who starts off all meek and mousy and you shouldn't do drugs. And then as soon as she gets infected, she turns into this like wild sex kitten and like wears these long red, you know, negligees. And, you know, she's like to school drugs. <laughs> to school. Yeah, she is their history teacher. Um, and she just yeah, it's great. She she completely hams it up. She goes from mousy to seductress, you know, on a dime. You can tell that she's in on the joke, which is great. But she actually only has five scenes in the film. <laughs> yeah. <Sorry. laughs> but her highlight of that film is she attacks Josh Hartnett in his car while he's trying to get drugs. And 
she, as as an alien she's an alien at this point and he drives really fast into a school bus and she flies out the front window and as you is, do as you do and is decapitated and the her head spouts octopi arms that reattaches to her body that's number four folks that's number five that's number, number five. five sorry the, the first was an was... honorable mansion <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> get ready it gets better <laughs> oh yes it does just, do I, okay just tangent mm. i love that era that 19 the late 90s era of like teen horror slash teen romance films it truly was the chef's kiss of uh of teen film what, whatever it wasn't like john hughes t- teen this was um i mean still a little homophobic which is fucking terrible but um it, 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 they almost they took genre movies and instead of casting adults they cast teenagers like she's all that mm-hmm. a lot of uh a lot of shakespearean mm-hmm. like that's where you get um 10 things i hate about you uh what other uh remember the titans like all of those like really fun mm-hmm. anyway mm-hmm. um varsity blues my goodness oh that's a great one. Oh yeah james vanderbeek it's that era of uh taking teens and giving them uh adult dialogue for one dawson's creek and uh giving them adult situations to be in wasn't usher also in the faculty usher yes he is the football captain nice nice yes yeah he Mm -hmm. gets infected pretty early on but usher is in the film yeah Um, good old usher raymond that's number five. Number four, I have yes. perhaps one of her most iconic roles of all time, Goldeneye, where she plays Xenia on the top. <laughs> tell the children, tell the children. For those of you that don't know Xenia on the top, she is a former Soviet agent who works for, I don't think it says it at the time, but she does work for 006, who dies at the beginning of the film, played by none other than Sean Bean. Or Sean Astin. Who? Who is Sean that? Astin? Sean B- Sean what, Bean. Sean like... Bean. Sorry. It's Sean. Yeah. I was thinking Sean Astin is from Lord of the Rings. Sean Bean, who you might remember as Ned Stark. Uh, he was no... also in Lord of the Rings. Oh, was he? Didn't he die in that too? <laughs> arrows. Remember? Oh, yes. Yeah. All the arrows. He so dies in everything. That's his reputation. And Goldeneye is no different, except at the beginning, it's a fake out, which is hilarious. But anyways... <laughs> Xenia on a top works for him. Um, her most famous scene comes at, near the beginning of the film where she lures a Canadian marshal onto a boat, has sex with him, and then kills them while they're having sex by crushing them to death with her thighs. She is a lust killer. We love, we stand, we stand. Um, mm-hmm. She has become an icon since throughout 007, the video games. She's just... She's pervasive throughout pop culture as Xenia on a top. That's my number four pick. It's just, it's not, I don't think it's a, I guess it's kind of a fun role. It's ridiculous. I don't think she's having as much fun with it as I thought maybe she does in other films, but it's it's an iconic role. You can't leave GoldenEye out, but I don't think it should rank as high as some of my other picks. <laughs> okay. I love that one. That one's great. I wasn't um, a huge James Bond Watcher. I'm not a Bond girl. I'm not a Bond no. girl. Yeah. yeah. But I have seen GoldenEye. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you had to if you want, played that that video game. Oh, I actually love the video game. I have it for Nintendo 64. It's good. Yeah. It's a good one. Yeah. Those are the memories. Okay, number three. Number three is coming at you at 1999. This is the remake of William Price's House on Haunted Hill. Yeah! iconic just evelyn stockard price evelyn stockard price married to jeffrey rush's character stephen price they have the most miserable marriage of all time and basically what this film is for those of you that don't know it's a remake the this remake has nothing to do with the original only its namesake really um but basically six strangers are invited to a night of partying for evelyn price's birthday um, they Evelyn and Stephen have 
wealth upon wealth. They own amusement parks all around the world. And they decided to have a spooky Halloween bash for Evelyn at the famous house on Haunted Hill, which used to be the Vanica Asylum for the criminally insane. And so it used to be a former insane asylum where they practiced maybe not some, some not so good things on patients. Um, the place burned down. The, pa- the patients had a riot, a mutiny. A bunch of people died. The house is haunted. So enter, <laughs> enter Tay Diggs, Ali Larder, Chris Catan, um, Bridget Wilson, just all of these hapless wits coming in. Peter Gallagher. Peter Gallagher. Oh, yes, yes, Peter Gallagher from the OC is in this. Um, the movie is whack, you guys. What makes it more whack too is the the first of all, like obviously, the, if you survive the night, you get paid a million dollars, which is great. So it's almost like a branding thing and Stephen Price has money to spare. But once they realize they're locked in the house and, you know, they start splitting up as you never should be doing. And, you know, people get picked off one by one throughout the entire film, though. Famke Janssen, this character, hates her husband. And it is so entertaining to watch. It's it almost takes you out of the film because they bicker and fight so much. And it's so entertaining. And I'm like, <laughs> how would that work in a COVID? Like, could you imagine them quarantined together? <laughs> like, <laughs> One of them would actually be dead. One of them would actually be dead. I mean, that does happen in the film. Someone does kill someone else. But um, it's an iconic film. It's just so good. Yeah. I mean, fun facts to know and tell. Produced by Robert Zemeckis and Joel Silver. Robert Zemeckis, who is famous for directing Romancing the Stone in 1984. But also, (laughs) yeah, like also uh, there's like another kid's uh, film, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? (laughs) Is that who produced this? Are you serious? Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, oh, and the special effects. I remember the one thing I remember about that film was it was so effing scary to watch because it was so realistic. I'm just reading now that Greg Nicotero was the, one of the makeup artists. So he's the makeup. Sorry, he is the. Sh- uh, he was famed for doing the special effects for George Romero's Dave the Dead and also the zombies that we see on Walking Dead. So. Wow. Well, I, I, I think one thing that really stands out about this film, people don't talk about Famke Jensen enough in this film, but one thing that people do talk about in this film is the set design is gorgeous. Like, I don't, I would, I don't, I don't know if you can call it art deco. I would, I don't know if you remember the film very well, but the, the main lobby after it's been abandoned, you know, and it turns into the quote house on Haunted Hill, it's gorgeous. And it's, mm-hmm. it's something that like, that's what people remember this film about is just the, the set design and the art design is something special, but also too, like you said, the, the practical effects, the makeup of like the, the ghosts of the patients and the ghost nurses, it's, it's something. Mm-hmm. It was like, um, there's another, uh, I was gonna say, it's like that, that other film where there's like, there is it 13 ghosts oh my goodness that's a good comparison mm-hmm. not n- yeah. not as good no <laughs> not as good no famke no. jensen no famke jensen no but comparable in scariness and amount of ghosts um or in early super- 2000s vibe oh this is 99 but you know yeah. that era <laughs> yeah and i was gonna say the other thing too is that this this the cast kind of breaches that whole like teen drama thing. Cause they had Allie Larder in it, who is famous for her whipped cream bikini from varsity blues. Anyway, just wanted oh. to throw that back out there. Also, you know, speaking of teen dramas, you know, has a cameo in this film is none other than our dear spike, James Marsters. He is the cameraman at the beginning of the film. <clears throat> Shut up. When oh, they're trapped um... on, they're trapped on an escalator that's going, or what do you call it? Like a tower of terror. And uh, <laughs> yeah, he's the cameraman. This is like the pre predecessor to Disney's haunted um, haunted mansion. <laughs> could you oh, imagine? Could you imagine? No, definitely haunted mansion. Oh, haunted mansion. Oh, I thought you were thinking of um, Tower of Terror. Haunted mansion. But also, yeah. yeah. Tower. Tower of Terror. Yeah. yeah. So that's my number three pick is so, House on Haunted Hill. And if you excellent. haven't seen it, I, I I don't actually think it's on any streaming service, which is unfortunate. But I recommend you find it somewhere and watch it because it's a trip. <laughs> now. On to it's probably on Hulu. It might be. I we don't get Hulu in Canada though, do we? Uh, we do. Oh, yeah, 
we do do get i didn't know that like you can subscribe but i think the licensing is different like the way that we can't watch mortal kombat on crave even though it's an hbo <laughs> like we couldn't uh we can it'll start streaming after the theatrical release is done like we're just getting wonder woman 1984 on crave as a stream yeah. so when it should have been like we could rent it or whatever i rented it on amazon uh, on prime but Anyway, you'll be able to find it. It's proper scary. Do you know what? Whatever that streaming service is, that's horror. Is it thriller? Shutter. It's Shutter. Shutter. Shutter yeah. might have it. Shutter might have it. Okay, so moving on to number two. Number two is a relatively more recent film. Uh, it's from 2013. It is Hansel and Gretel: Witch Hunters. Have you seen this film? Um. I- Turns out I've seen all these films. Jeremy Renner is in it, is he not? He's yeah. Hansel. <laughs> Jeremy Renner is Hansel. Gemma Arterton is Gretel. Famke and... Janssen is Muriel, the witch. <laughs> <laughs> Produced by Will Ferrell. Oh, is it? Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Oh, God. For those of you that have not seen this, this film is 100% a cult following. It is, it is such a guilty pleasure. I love it. Something about Famke Jensen, she's in a lot of guilty pleasures. Faculty, House on Haunted Hill, Hansel and Gretel. Those are like guilty pleasure films. Yeah, I think we mentioned, sorry, just to just to put it in there. She's like, her age is uh, Pattinson, Robert Pattinson. He's in a lot of, he chooses well. He's in a lot of garbage, but he chooses well and acts very well. Anyway, go on. Please tell well, us. The film, the film is is Hansel and Gretel. For those of you that know the the very famous fairy tale, um, but it's just it's the set design again is it's so twisted. It's almost like Tim Burton esque. I want to say, um, mm-hmm. a little Tim Burton esque, um, and it's it's just Hansel and Gretel, but really taken to a rated R place. Um, also, Hansel by happenstance suffers from diabetes, so that's a plot point. <laughs> So he needs a shot of insulin every few hours or he will die. Um, but Good thing they're going to eat a candy house. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, no, they got that. He got magic-induced diabetes from a encounter with Famke Jensen's character when they were kids. So this is like they encountered the witch in Hansel and Gretel and escaped. Um, and then this is them growing up and then they get revisited by the witch. And so the film is... Like, again, Famke Jensen plays, she plays mysterious. She plays playful as the witch. Like, it's very fun witch to watch, right? Um, but the film itself is just so much fun. It's just like a beat-em-up. Like, it's just Jeremy Renner and and Gemma Arterton just, like, throwing bows against all these, like, witch monsters. And it's just, like, like a combat film. It's, like, I'm trying to compare it to something. Like, give me, like, a, a franchise, and I'll be like, yeah, um... Well, I mean, at the time, I mean, it's a mix of what these two were starring in, which is Avengers, which they yeah. had to, they had to push the release dates for these because Avengers, uh, Gemma Arterton was a Bond girl, so it's kind of like espionage. Uh, it's very like Sleepy Hollow, dark goth, but um, very action, very genre action, um, but done well because <laughs> we've seen a lot of trash that's done poorly and it's based on fairy tales <laughs> i'm I looking at it. you Kristen stewart red riding hood oh man no don't get me st- we were not doing a top five Kristen stewart that's not gonna happen no. well i i don't know that there is a top five so yeah i don't know either that's but all no, said. <laughs> that's i i love i love this film it's such a guilty pleasure it's just like action like literally like a witch gets clotheslined off her broom like it's that level of like like throwing bows it's great so it's like a rated r hocus pocus kind of, yeah that's a great comparison that's a great comparison it's like hocus pocus meets like uh i don't want to say charlie's angels because it's not like mission based but it's that lo- that kind of style of fighting you know where it's like uh, very martial arts based it's great like but not crouching tiger hidden dragon level fighting no a little more brawly than that Oh, a, li- a little less technique, a little more brawly. Okay, so like a Mick G, but not a full Mick G. Maybe a Fast and the Furious. Do they fight in Fast and the Furious? Oh, they do- fight all the t- maybe. A co- do you know what? Later on in the series, there's a little more hand to hand, but okay, yeah, 
Okay, a, a limber Fast and Furious fight scene mixed with Hocus Pocus is what you'd expect from this film. <laughs> so apparently there's a huge cult following yeah. for what they call a horror fantasy uh, horror fantasy action. That's what That's, this is. Yeah, it's like, nah, we got to come up with a better one than that, but we'll let you know when we do. That is a crazy, crazy number two. It's I'm, like, I'm, I didn't do it justice. Like, Famke Jansen... She is so alluring in this film. Like she it's great. Like she really just she hams it up in like the best way possible. And like it's she's she's wonderful. Okay, 25 minutes ago, cut this. Okay. <laughs> Number one is none other than X2 X-Men United. Wow. Wow. The only film where Jean Grey was written moderately well. Her, she was the only film where they gave her an arc where they let her talk, where they foreshadowed that she will eventually become the Phoenix. This is the only film that treats Funky Jensen as Jean Grey with some sort of respect. Obviously, I did not mention X-Men 3, The Last Stand, because that film is doo-doo. <laughs> it's Hot crap. Mm -hmm. So X-Men 2, released in 2003, directed by He Who Should Not Be Named, um, really focuses on the... Um, a old figure emerging from Wolverine's past. Surprise, everything's about Wolverine. And yeah. really what it leads to is that there's uh, a mutant fa a facility that experiments on mutants in Alkali Lake in Alberta. And um, they capture the professor and they use the professor's power to power up a dark version of Cerebro that can find and track all the mutants and then kill them. And so it becomes a rescue mission to get Xavier out of the building. Um, throughout the film, Fomka Jansen is seeing visions. She's she's losing control of her powers, and it's done very well. Like it, they really ratchet up the tension with her character throughout the film. Like, okay, something's going wrong, you know. And it just it makes its way up the the levels of urgency. And then as they're trying to escape the facility before this dam breaks down and water floods it, she sacrifices herself to let them all escape, and she seemingly dies and becomes the phoenix but we don't find that out till the third film but that is probably i would say her most iconic my favorite famke jensen role Thoughts? oh my uh wow that's i mean but this okay do you know what i i can hear it i can hear the groans already what about the taken <laughs> series what about oh, do you know do you know no. what <laughs> hose listen we have not seen every single one and we've not I've seen every single one of her films. We are stands. <laughs> I've seen Taken 1 and 2 and honestly I don't think they deserve to be on the list. She's not no. interesting enough in those films to be on this list. They don't give her enough to work with. No. And uh, I've seen other films that I maybe would not have put at number 1. But mm. um <clears throat> Yeah, I know you disagree. So let us let us know what you disagree with, what you think, and I will let you know right now what I think. So I agree with you that uh, this role is the best X-Men role. Yeah, this is her best X-Men role, for sure. Oh, but I loved her so much. Oh, I think I'm confusing her. With Mila Jovovich, who is in Resident Evil. Oh, yeah, I was no. waiting for you to say Resident Evil. And I was She's like, not, no. is this a, are we going to rename this the Raccoon City podcast? No, we're not, because that <laughs> is not what happens. But here's the thing is that I thought, have you ever seen Made? Seen what? Uh, Made with John Favreau and Vince Vaughn. I don't it think was, they have. It was released uh, in 2001, and it stars Vince Vaughn and uh, John Favreau. John Favreau is, like, hot in this movie. What happened? Uh, like, I mean, what, what do you mean what happened? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're just, like, two guys. Okay, so, okay, I, 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 I'm just going to read the plot summary from Wikipedia because I'm going to not do it justice. So uh, Bobby has ties to the local mafia. Max works as a mason. They're, they hang out together. Um, there's another movie. She plays a woman named Jessica. She's the stripper girlfriend, and she's a daughter named Chloe that gets tied up in the mafia work. Oh. So 
Yeah, this there was another movie before Made uh, sw- that they were both started in Swingers. And this is supposed to be kind of like an extension of those characters from Swingers. I did what not I, know this. Is what I've been meant to believe. Or I'm maybe, not- yeah, maybe a friend was just like, they were in Swingers, now they're in Made, and I'm just confusing the two storylines. <laughs> No, you're right. I'm just it's it's not like an actual sequel, but it's like a spiritual follow up. Yeah. So I, I see saw, that. Yeah, I saw this one. P. Diddy is in this damn movie. It's crazy. There's all kinds of people, but the, those are like uh, those are the people I remember. Also, Dre DiMatteo from Sopranos is like one of my favorite characters. Um, but like Dustin Diamond, all kinds of like uncredited Jennifer Esposito. Grandmaster Flash, he plays the spa DJ. <laughs> but anyway, I I thought for sure Maid would be on there, but it's like, oh, maybe Brent never saw it. I have not seen Maid, so I apologize. This no, is just a- this is the realm of my Fomka experience. But mm-hmm. I these are my roles that just they entertain me to no end. Except X Men Two, that doesn't entertain me. That just I thought that was a good you know, showing for Jean Grey. And and sadly, we have to rate that on a relative scale because all the X-Men movies don't do anybody justice except Wolverine. So it's that's a relative scale. (laughs) Yeah, and like, we're not even including the fact that she appears in that Wolverine movie. God, gross. But I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh, also, one of my favorite films of all time. Um, She has like a minor role. She plays a woman named Petra. I, as a girl in high school, um, am just and still am in love with Edward Norton. So I watched every Edward Norton movie. And I will watch every Edward Norton movie until the day I die. She was in Rounders with Edward oh, Norton and Matt Damon. Yes. So that's another one that I know her from. That was released in 1998. Little old me. Like, little, little, little jolly. Um, just... <laughs> pining after edward norton having like uh really problematic thoughts not knowing what to do with the roles that he had in american history x and uh, oh i know i just watched that recently and that is prim- a hard watch right and primal fear like yeah but this is not a top 10 a top five edward norton list this is a top five Bumpkin johnson list so maybe we'll do that next time I, I I actually thought of another actress to do. I think you're gonna get a kick out of, but we'll do we'll do Edward Norton as well. We have all okay. the time in the world for sure. Yes. <laughs> um, who who? Let's let's. Do I want to spoil it? No, don't spoil it. I'll t- I'll t- I'll write it in the chat. Hold on, hold on. Okay. I think Let's... you'll get a kick out of this one. Oh, okay. Home girl. Yeah, come on. That's a yes. We're gonna have to leave TV out of this. <clears throat> Yeah, so we will. my honorable mention would have been television for Fomke Janssen. Um, I agree with Brent's list wholeheartedly. It's a good list. You should watch all her films. The gays did not claim her as they should have. That's weird, actually. Right? I think yeah. it's because they claimed Emma Frost. And did we claim January Jones? I don't know. I don't want to claim I, January I, Jones. I didn't. I think that she ruined her position uh, with Ma- her character in Mad Men. Oh, Betty Draper was such a downer girl, right? And how, I can't, I can't get past. I can, no one can get past the monolith that is Don Draper to get to Betty Draper. So there's just no trying. Mm-mm. Um. So yeah. Uh, if you yourself have a better list of Fomke Janssen films that you'd like to rank, send it to <laughs> us because I want to see it. Yeah. Tell <laughs> if me. If you've seen 1998's me, The Gingerbread Man. <laughs> is she in that too? How many gingerbread films is she in? Oh my God, she least, is. At least two. <laughs> She's in two. Have you seen where she plays Leanne Magruder? Oh, I've seen this film. I've seen The Gingerbread Man. Have you really? Yeah, I have seen this one. Kenneth Branagh, yeah. Oh, wait. Maybe I have too. Because I... Oh, Robert Downey Jr., Daryl Hannah. I think I've seen this. Robert... Is that Robert De Niro? No. No. Oh. May, Whit- May Whitman's in it from Arrested Development. Um, 
No, Robert Downey Jr. Robert Duvall. Wow. Oh my god, I think I've seen this. Okay, do you know what? We're gonna go refresh our um refresh our memories because it has been a second since 1998. <clears throat> <laughs> um, and we're just kind of getting old. The brain fog is l- not fully lifted. <clears throat> <laughs> So get ready for the list that we're going to do before or after we talk about Loki next week. Some At some point. When there's another break in, in Marvel properties, we'll do more lists. Yes. So um, if you've enjoyed this episode, please send your top five to ten list of favorite Funko Yonsa movies to fullvolumepod at gmail.com. You can reach out to us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Comic Book Syndicate or at Comic Syndicate, hashtag full volume pod. You can listen to every single one of these episodes and watch the video versions of the review um, at www.comicbooksyndicate.com or YouTube at Comic Book Syndicate. <sighs> but until next time. I have been your host, G.I. Jolie. I've been Harvey Brent. I'm just really excited for Loki. I know. It's going to be great next week, you guys. The promotional info that's coming out about it. and It's just, it's going to be a fun concept again. So I'm, I'm pumped. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Keep it loud. Keep it at full volume, babies. Bye. Bye.